Hi everybody. Um, I had mentioned in an announcement that I wanted to uh, provide a solution or two for a couple of the problems in Module 6 Written Work Discussion Board. Uh, I mentioned in that announcement that I had noticed um, a large number of people were making some sort of common mistakes or there were some common themes going on there uh, that were not correct and um, I just wanted to address those in this video. And uh, it's particularly important that you become comfortable with these topics because of everything in this course probably the two most important ideas you need moving forward into calculus is how to uh, manipulate and simplify trigonometric expressions okay like you see here and and a great way to do that is to practice by solving or proving identities rather not solving proving identities um, and so uh, that's sort of the emphasis for these problems and then the other important skill we need to walk away with is the ability to solve a trig equation. And so I want to look at number two and number five from the problem set there. Again, this is the module six written work discussion board problems. And these were the two that really jumped out at me as um, uh, a lot of, um, there's a very similar mistakes going on and, and, and that was happening quite a bit. So uh, I hope this offers some clarity, uh, but if not, please reach out and let, let's talk about it and go through more examples. Okay. So let's dig into number two. Again, the skill we're after is to be able to uh, simplify, manipulate, uh, tweak these trigonometric expressions we see. And an excellent way to practice that is by proving identities or verifying identities. Now here's the mistake I saw. A lot of people were cross multiplying here. And I understand your motivation. Um, if you were solving this equation for x, that is exactly what I would do. I would, I would cross multiply. The thing is here, we're not solving this equation for x. We are trying to verify whether or not the left side equals the right side. And so right now, we actually don't know if that equal sign is really accurate or true. And the only way cross multiplication works is if the left and right side are indeed truly accurate. So when you do this, when you're verifying a proof, you're kind of jumping the gun there. You're, you're assuming that the equal sign is accurate when our goal is to really show that it's accurate. So remember, when you prove an identity, whatever's on the left must stay on the left. Whatever's on the right must stay on the right. I always recommend people draw a big sort of bar down the middle just to help your eyes see that the two sides are separate and you cannot jump over that. We simply need to make the left side look like the right side. And you can uh, manipulate both sides if needed. There's always many ways to do these and often there's uh, one nice succinct way and there's plenty of long ways to get there but it doesn't matter as long as you get there. So I'll just share with you how I might approach this. I'm just going to work on the left side though what I'm going to do would work on either side. And uh, I'm just going to rewrite what I have on the left. And a very common thing to do here is to make use of the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate would be 1 minus cosine x. And I've got to do that to the top as well. So that way I'm, you know, 1 minus cosine over 1 minus cosine is really 1. I'm not changing the value of the left side, just its appearance. The reason conjugate is so darn useful in trig is if you notice, um, well, let me just write the top down. But on the bottom there, you have a difference of squares. You have a minus b times a plus b. And so if I were to uh, factor, or sorry, multiply that out, I would get 1 minus cosine squared. And hopefully you're starting to recognize that that's part of the Pythagorean identity, isn't it? If I maybe come off and do a little scratch work, the one identity or Pythagorean I, uh, identity I remember is sine squared plus cosine squared x is 1. And so I see that just simply by moving that cosine to the other side, you would get that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. That's exactly what I have here in the denominator. So this denominator can be rewritten as sine squared. Just making that substitution right there. The numerator stays the same. And now if you notice what can happen is uh, this sign would knock out one of the signs in the denominator. And so what I'm left with is a 1 minus cosine x over a sine x. 
and that did it. Now I've got the left hand side matching up to the right hand side. Uh, in this case I didn't need to do anything to the right hand side though I could have. There's many ways to do this. In this case I'm done. I always follow these things up by saying the left hand side equals the right hand side thus an identity. And that basically tells the reader that, okay, I finished, I, I did it, I, proved, I got the two sides to equal one another. So um, the main idea here is that when proving an identity, what's on the left stays on the left, what's on the right stays on the right. You cannot cross over that because to do so would assume the equal sign is, uh, is telling the truth, that it's accurate. And uh, we can't do that here because that's our job for this particular problem. Okay. Let me jump over to the equation here. Equation, um, this was problem number five. And um, I saw two common themes on this one. I, I saw that either people um, uh, didn't get it or I, I highly suspect that solutions were copied from a math software solving program. And I could just tell because of the way the solutions were written. Um, and I mentioned in the, uh, the announcement that that's going to get you points, but it's not going to get you the understanding. And, you know, the points you weren't in trig aren't going to do you a darn bit of good in calculus. You need the understanding. So please make sure you are wrapping your head around these things because I want you to be successful in your next class. Let's go about solving this. Um, like all other equations we would solve or trig equations, I'm going to start by isolating the cosine. So I'm going to move the 3 over. I'd get 3 cosine of 4x. That's equal to 3. And then I'll go ahead and divide by the 3 out front, giving me cosine of 4x would that would be 3 over 3 which is just 1 okay and now I need to either use inverse trigonometry to find the angle that would give me cosine to be 1 or I could just use my unit circle knowledge if it happens to be a ratio I find on the unit circle which this does and so what we need to do here is I'm not really concerned about solving for x just yet. I'm concerned about finding the complete general solution for 4x. And just thinking about my unit circle, I know that cosine is a 1 right here at 0 degrees or 360 if you want to go all the way around the lap, but notice 360 is not included on my interval, so I would choose to go with zero. But that's it, that's the only place cosine equals a one. Therefore, I know that's my angle 4x. So 4x would have to equal zero degrees. Now here's what's crucially important, and this is where a lot of mistakes happen on this problem. Before you get rid of that 4, I mean a lot of people divide by 4 and that's absolutely the right idea. You need to get x by itself. But before you do that, you need to set up the entire general solution for 4x. So not only would um, 0 degrees allow cosine of 4x to equal 1, but also anything that's coterminal to that angle. right? Anything coterminal to 0 degrees, if you plugged it in here, would give you cosine of 1. So again, it's not only 0 that's good, it's anybody that's coterminal. So plus 360k, where k is some integer. It's some number of laps around the circle, either positive or negative. Now that I've set up the entire general solution, now I can go about solving for x. And I could divide everything through by 4. And I'm going to get that x equals 0 degrees plus 90 degrees k. Now, with these multiple angle equations, all right, so when you've got a constant multiplying your variable inside the trig function, um, if they were to ask me to find the general solution for x, I'd be done. If they said find all real solutions that satis uh, for x that satisfy the equation, that would be it. Okay. It's a little more of a pain when they actually want me to only list out solutions on the interval 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi or whatever it may be. Um, some of these you can just kind of eyeball and figure out, but I think the safest thing to do is always to make a table and just let the table tell you uh, where your answers are. So 
um, I would choose to just state my answer. It's 0 degrees plus 90 degrees K. And then I'm going to let K take on various integer values. So it's K is going to represent a certain number of laps around the circle. Um, and you don't always know exactly how many K values you need. You just keep going until you've basically the answers you're creating here have exceeded or gone outside your uh, window there. So watch, for example, if I were to let k equal 1, I know this isn't going to work out the way I want it, but let's just see what happens. If you plug k equals 1, or uh, negative 1, uh, x would be 0 degrees plus 90 degrees times negative 1. That comes out to negative 90 degrees. Now that's a perfectly good solution, and if you plug negative 90 degrees in here for x, it's definitely going to work. It is a solution but it's not a solution over the window they instructed us to look at okay and so it's not an answer I would report back on so anyways let's let k equals zero if I plug in a zero here this would be zero degrees plus ninety degrees times zero well that just comes out to zero degrees and that is within the window right zero degrees is allowed here so that's within the window. That's an acceptable answer that I'll report back. And I keep going until I've exhausted them all and I've got them all. So now I'm going to let k equal 1. So this would be 0 degrees plus 90 degrees times 1. That's 90 degrees. That satisfies my equation. And it's in my window. So I'm going to take it. That's a good answer. i got to keep going though. I'm going to let k equal 2. So that would be 0 plus 180, so that's 180 degrees. So that solution is within the window. We take that. Let k equal 3. Oops, so let's see, that's 0 degrees plus 90 degrees times 3. That's 270 degrees. That's within my window, so I'm accepting that answer. Let's keep going. You keep going till you leave the window. So this would be 0 degrees plus 90 times 4. That's 360. That's a legitimate answer, but we have now left the window. 360 is not allowed. Well, actually, that's not true. It's not that it's not allowed. It's just that's not what they're interested in. They only want me to report back answers from 0 to 360. And so all they would be are those ones highlighted in yellow, my, uh, my solution set here would be 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. So remember, when you are solving a multiple angle equation, a crucial step is solve the equation completely for that multiple angle, in this case for 4x and that includes setting up the entire complete general solution so not just the angle like in this case 0 but also take into account any coterminal angle that would um, or I'm sorry any angle that would be coterminal to 0 in this case once you've done that then you can divide everything through by 4 or whatever the constant is to uh, get x all by itself um, and then often a table is really the safest way to go about it especially because if you're working in radians maybe um, and you might have more than one solution uh, there could be a lot of them and it could be very easy to scoop them all up without missing one um, without sort of having a, a systematic approach like this so anyways I hope this helps um, please reach out if there's any clarification needed again this problem uh, solving a trig equation very important very important moving forward um, Proving an identity, it's important. It's not really like proving identities is important in calculus, but this skill, the ability to dance with these trig identities and recognize things like, oh, that's that's a Pythagorean identity. Those are really essential skills in um, calculus and beyond. So take care of yourselves and uh, let me know if I can help with anything. All right, have a good one.